Hi everybody and welcome. This video is part of the ethical hacking course and the main objective is not to deeply dive into networking but rather to ensure that you as a learner have enough prerequisite knowledge to continue successfully in the course. I also want to establish a link between networking and security. We have a lot to cover so let us get started. Networking is the backbone of computing. A standalone computer is a powerful processing machine, but a connected computer opens up a whole new world for us. As complex as it may sound, networking is simply computers communicating with one another. So let me explain this process using a similar non-computing activity. Say you want to send a gift a mobile phone for instance, for someone somewhere around the world. You won't just send it as it is, it will never reach, and if it does, it will be probably damaged. Instead, you first package it, then you add the recipient's name and address, you add your name and address in case it's not delivered and has to be returned to you, then via a courier, the item travels around the world until it reaches its destination. When received, the item is unpacked. In essence, computers do the same thing. They send and receive digital packages. In networking, there are two popular standards that define how computers should communicate. Number one, the OSI reference model that has a stack of seven layers and number two, the TCP IP stack. This particular model was developed by the ARPANET project which then gave birth to the internet. In this course, I will be referencing the TCP IP stack. Although they have differences, at their core, both models do the same thing and that's why we can map them like so. I mentioned the word stack a couple of times, so let's examine the significance of this word. In computing, a stack is a structure that has two important characteristics. Number one, the lower layer provides support and is needed for the layers on top of it. So in the TCP IP stack, the internet layer needs the network layer, the transport layer needs the bottom two layers, and the application layer needs transport, internet, and network. Number two, when we use a stack, we start from top, kind of like a stack of plates in your kitchen. When you want to take a plate, you take the one on top. In networking, we use the stack when we start communicating. The data flows from the application layer down the layers. So let us see what the function of each layer is. The network layer is responsible for the physical connection. It can be wired or wireless, for example. At this layer, we have the Ethernet protocol, and in terms of data, we have the MAC or the physical address of a computer. The internet layer is in charge of addressing and routing. At this layer, we can find the internet protocol, but also the address resolution protocol, ARP, and the internet control message protocol, ICMP. ARP will be covered in another chapter. ICMP is a support protocol that we often use to troubleshoot connections, for instance, when we use ping or the traceroute utilities. The transport layer is in charge of host-to-host -host communication, including things like segmenting the data and handling things like flow control and multiplexing. While there are several protocols that can be found at this layer, for our course, it will be one of two, the Transmission Control Protocol, TCP, or the User Datagram Protocol, UDP. And finally, 
The application layer is the layer closest to us people. Typically, we would use an application like WhatsApp or a web browser, for instance. And depending on the app itself, a different protocol would be utilized. And from this layer, our data or message would flow down the stack. Needless to say, there are many protocols in this layer. The following are some examples of application layer protocols, and of course, there are a lot more. There are two main communication architectures in computing, the client-server model and peer-to-peer. -peer. The client-server model is the more common of the two. One popular example is web communication, which uses either HTTP or HTTP secure, HTTPS. Web communication is simple. An HTTP request is sent to the server using one of the available methods in the protocol. The server would then respond with either the resource, the web page for instance, or an error message. There are different methods available in HTTP. The most common are get, which is a client request for data, say for the home page of a website for instance. This happens when we click a link. We are using the GET request. There is POST, which sends data back to the server, such as our registration information or login credentials. We fill them in the form, hit that SUBMIT button. We are most likely using the POST method. Number three, PUT, which uploads resources to the web server such as an image, let's say. And finally, delete, which removes resources from the web server. The following is an HTTP header that I captured using a tool called Wireshark. In the HTTP request on top, notice the get method. And in the HTTP response at the bottom, notice the 200 code with an OK from the server. Another example of client-server communication is email messaging. The communication model in this case is a little different. Here, we have different protocols with different specializations, meaning sending or receiving messages. The SMTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol listening at port 25 is responsible for sending messages. What it does, it pushes the received message to other servers that would be responsible for delivering that email, namely a POP3 or an IMAP server. POP3 or the Post Office Protocol version 3 pops messages to the recipient on port 110. It does not keep a copy of the message. An IMAP server, on the other hand, operating on port 143, would retain a copy and only when you delete a message, the server would synchronize and delete that copy. Different organizations use different servers, but this is all invisible to us and the server type doesn't really matter. As the message cascades down the stack, Additional information gets added to our data in the form of headers. At the transport layer, as I mentioned before, we will see one of two protocols, TCP or UDP. In order to understand what happens at this layer, we must discuss the TCP and UDP headers. The main differences between these two protocols is that TCP focuses on reliability and performs error checking and flow control, while UDP focuses on speed, reduced latencies. In other words, it doesn't care much about errors. To achieve reliability, TCP requires establishing a connection at the beginning of a communication session. UDP, on the other hand, does not require a connection. 
Let's start with the TCP header. The data here is organized in 32-bit blocks. First, we have the source and destination ports of 16 bits each. If an IP address is the logical address of a computer, a port is a logical address within a computer. Let's say a web browser sends a request to a web server. We need to have a reference of who or what will handle the incoming connection on the web server. There are 65,536 ports within each computer. Out of those, there are 1,023 well-known and reserved ports for services. An HTTP server would listen on port 80, for example. However, a client does not typically have a dedicated port. Instead, a random port is used. And since the TCP header has that information, the number, the web server would use this number when it responds. Let's go back to our TCP header. We said TCP focuses on reliability and does things like flow control. The way this is achieved is by using a sequence number for each segment. The receiving computer would need to acknowledge what the sender starts. So these two 32-bit parts of the header will do exactly that. Next is the data offset, which is a 4-bit number that specifies the length of the TCP header. Then there are three reserved bits that are not really used and are set to zero. What comes next, however, is very, very important. TCP has six important flags. Each is a single bit that you turn on and off. Each has a job to specify something, to say something. And here is represented using the first letter of that flag. So for example, S for SYN or synchronize is to start a connection. A is for ACK or acknowledgement. P is for push. This flag is used to ask the recipient not to buffer the data. U is for urge or urgent. This is to prioritize data. R is reset and is used to reject a connection. F is for fin or finish which is used to terminate a connection. Next is the window or the window size. In TCP, we use the term windowing to specify the amount of data the recipient can receive. Checksum is for error checking and ensuring that the header is okay. The urgent pointer is used if the urgent flag is set. So if we set it to one, then we need to point to that priority data. Next, we can use from 0 to 32 bits for options. Unused bits are left as padding. And then comes our original data. The UDP header, as you will see, is much simpler. It does have port numbers, source and destination, then the length of the header and the data, then comes checksum, however is optional here and not necessarily implemented since UDP does not really care much about error. That's it, then comes our data. Before we move to the internet layer, let's examine an example of a TCP connection. In TCP, a connection is established using something called the three-way handshake. First, the sending computer would send a SYN request, meaning it would turn on the SYN flag to start a connection. The receiver would acknowledge, but also it would send its own SYN to ensure that the other computer is also ready. Finally, the first computer would have to acknowledge. Notice also the sample sequence numbers that I use to specify order. I want you to think about it and let me know in the comment section if you think 
that two messages are enough to establish the connection. In other words, we really didn't need the three-way handshake. It should have been a two-way handshake. Of course, it's not, but I'm curious to know what you think. Moving on to the internet layer where addressing and routing is handled, the IP or internet protocol is the main protocol at this layer. So let's examine it. I'm sure you've heard of IP version 4 and IP version 6. The latter was introduced not long ago to ensure, among other things, we never run out of IP addresses. With 128 bits compared to the 32 bits of IP version 4, IP version 6 can support over 340 undecillion addresses. Yes, that's a number, undecillion. It's a number with 36 zeros, compared to only 4 billion plus addresses in IP version 4. IP version 4 has 4 octets or bytes and is expressed in decimal or binary using the dot separator, as you can see in the example in front of you. 192.168.44.128 Part of the address of an IP version 4 is reserved for the network address and the remaining part is for individual computers or hosts. IP version 6 has a 64-bit prefix followed by a 64-bit interface ID. To understand network versus host addresses, think of an actual physical address. We have the general location, like a country or a city, and then we have the house address within that location. As an example, in the UAE, there are around 4 million house addresses, for example. The UAE here represents the network address, and each one of these houses would be like a host. If we use additional information and specify the city, so Dubai in the UAE, then we will have less house addresses, and so on. As you can see, we have network addresses and host addresses. The top one is called class C or slash 24, 24 here represents the 24 bits reserved for the network. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 is equal to 24. Class B network, the middle one, is slash 16. 16 bits for the network. When we say slash 8, that means only 8 bits are reserved for the network, and that's a class C. You will also notice as we have less space reserved for the network, we will have more space reserved for the host addresses. So in a class C network, for example, we only have 8 bits for host, 2 to the power 8 is 256. In a class B network, we would have around 65,500 something computer addresses and in a class 8 network, we would have around 16 million some computer addresses. You can do the math. Class A networks are reserved for large corporations and governments. Class B networks are assigned to also large corporations and internet service providers, for example. And there are more than 2 million class C networks available for small businesses and home use. There are two other classes, class D, which is a multicast class, and class E, which is reserved, that are available in IP version 4. Also notice the most significant bit on the left for class A, which is 0, class B, which is 1, 0, and class C, which is 1, 1, 0. What this means is that there is a range for these networks. So for class A, it starts from 0.0.0.0. It ends at 127.255.255.255. .255 .255. 
and so on as you can see right here in front of you on the screen again it is recommended that you know how to do the conversion between binary and decimal and vice versa if you do then you will be able to calculate it yourself go ahead and try it and let me know if you have any questions two more concepts and i will conclude this lesson ip version 4 supports three types of transmissions number one unicast transmission which is sending a packet from the source to one destination ip address only as you can see in this image from cisco broadcast transmission is sending a packet to all other destination ip addresses in that network and finally multicast transmission is sending a packet to a group we call it a multicast address group and finally there are two types of ip version 4 addresses internal or private addresses and external or public ip addresses through a concept called natting nat stands for network address translation we can translate private IP version 4 addresses to public IP addresses. So imagine the IP address that you have at home. It's probably something like 192.168, etc., etc. This is a class C network. Somebody from outside cannot see this private address. What they see is your edge router, your router that stands between your internal network and external network this is it for this video thank you for watching